So this is a practice plate that I've made, and you can go to the uh, GrabCAD link in the description and download it to follow along if you'd like. But in this video, I'd like to go through using GD and T, or as I like to call it, GDT, uh, in Alibre. I realize I don't have a lot of Alibre drawing videos, and I want to make that uh, better right now. So let's go to Send To up here, and we'll say Make Drawing of This Design. And uh, we can choose our drawing template. That looks good to me. Default scale. You can always adjust that later if you don't like it. We can give this a drawing number. Uh, sheet scale is connected to our settings, so we're all good there. Jumping into the drawing environment now. Um, this looks like a good front view. And I have my top and right pre-selected. I'll go ahead and add a little isometric view right there as well. And we'll say OK. So. There we were able to insert our drawing group. And a few things about this, right? GDT is not available in a Libra Atom. So if you're using a Libra Atom, this video is not for you. Also, I'm pre-assuming that you know GDT already watching this video. So I'm not going to go through what the GDT symbols mean, just um, how to do it if you already know it. If there's interest, I'm sure I can cover how to understand GDT if you don't. Just let me know if that's something that you want, and I'll see if I can fit it in somewhere. But let's go ahead and start off um, with a feature control frame. And let's say that I want my A datum to be this bottom face. And it's good form to always use something like flatness, maybe to 10 thou. Uh, we don't need any material modifiers. Yeah, that looks good. So I can simply click show my leader, and then there's my flatness. I'll go 1994. I don't think that makes a difference in this case. And apply. Now, all since I said that this is my datum A, I'll go ahead and notate that. And I have to say this does a really good job at keeping to uh, the standards that I'm used to. I was trained in ASME Y14.5, and uh, this looks perfect to me. So. I really appreciate uh, the standards that they're doing, and I think ASME Y14.5 is about 90% the same with ISO. So whether you're working with ISO or ASME, I think the fundamental language that we're using here is very similar. Uh, next, maybe I want to define this upper surface. For that, I can give this a dimension. And I can click on Edit, or in fact, I'll actually go with Change Dimension. And we'll change down here to go with basic. And there we've got our basic frame. Now we can just leave this as 0.5 thick, but tying it back to a datum structure, in my opinion, is much more effective. So we'll add a feature control frame. Uh, again, we'll show our leader. This time I'll go with profile of a surface. And even though I haven't established my other datums yet, um, well, I guess I have to have my other datums established, but we'll uh, we'll get there. Again, I'll do the same tolerance, about 10 thou, profile of a surface, and I know I want that relative to datum A. So we've got our bottom and our top surfaces defined. Let's have a little more fun, right? We'll want to establish our datum B, and for that, I'll add another feature control frame. This time I'll go with perpendicularity. I've been doing 10 thou a lot. You know, maybe I'll go fancy, right? Maybe five, a little tighter. And uh, you actually can use a max material modifier with a, a perpendicular tolerance. I'll show my leader line. Again, I don't think changing it to 1994 makes that big of a difference in my case, but uh, that works. So apply that, and I forgot to uh, add my datum. So I'll be sure to highlight my primary datum there, and OK. So now we are perpendicular relative to datum A right there. And I really should give that a diameter, shouldn't I? So let's actually not show our leader. And I can move this right there. Since this is at max material, uh, maybe I can adjust the tolerance on my dimension. So we're going to say 
Three decimal places is fine, plus minus maybe 0 0.01 and zero. And there's our tolerances. Now, I may want to uh, consider going zero tolerance at max material because then the operator can choose to divvy up size and position 100% to themselves. Of course, theoretically, I would add in 5,000 to my plus or account for that 5,000 that I just taken out of it. But since this isn't a serious part, um, that would be a great way to uh, maximize the amount of tolerance that you give. Even though it looks like you're not giving, you know, it looks like you're giving less tolerance at first glance because you're like zero tolerance, but uh, but I think it's a very effective way to maximize the number of parts that you can uh, accept rather than reject. So that will be for that. Let's make a datum C now. Oh, and I forgot the notation on my datum B, so we'll add that to the feature control frame. Now we'll make sure that this also. Will be basic and it's very convenient I was just working with a platform the other day that didn't dimension like this off the center hole and it was a little bit uh, harder to work with so we'll say basic I'm really glad that a Libra has that feature they can just dimension off whole centers right um, what else I'll probably need to position at least one of the walls and since we're dealing with theoretically perfect since we're dealing with theoretically perfect uh, dimensions we can get away with these basics here see the, the idea is we have uh, been able to define this slot with basic dimensions, and then we can do our geometric tolerances. And let's say datum C will be on this basic dimension right here. Okay, great. So with datum C, uh, when it's on a linear dimension, we are uh, putting an expanding a uh, datum simulator in there and it's going to reference the center plane and so we should be fully constrained we've got a being on the bottom face b being this circle here and c being the plane in between these two faces let's go with uh, this dimension now because i've established my other datums i can select b and c and uh, it's not going to make much of a difference, but I am going to specify a max material boundary on B. That shouldn't affect this surface at all, but um, I like to have my datum structures kind of match one another. And it looks like I lost my datum A, so I'll put my datum A back in. And while I'm at it, I might as well change that to 94. Okay, excellent. Next, let's uh, do a feature control frame for these four holes. In fact, before I do that, I'll actually make this uh, have a diameter. And maybe I can set my dimensions here. We'll say plus 0 0.015 minus 0 0.005. So 15 thou and 5 thou if you're working in inches. And there you go. Now let's add a feature control frame onto that so we won't need to show our leader. We'll go to 94. We'll give this a position, often called a true position. We'll say zero again at max. That's my favorite way to do it because it's confusing if you don't understand it, but as the hole grows, you can divvy up your total tolerance between position and size so you can end up accept, having more possibilities to accept parts. We'll say A, B at max material condition, C. Uh, great. 
So we'll stick this right underneath our dimension here, and then on future relative, this is a good example of doing, you know, a composite frame A, B, max, C, tolerance 0, 0.00. .00. Let's go to two thou. We won't do that. We'll do that regardless of feature size. Apply. So there you can do, you know, your stack feature control frames if you'd like. And then we can change this to a composite tolerance. That's what I was looking for. And then that is my preferred way to do stacked feature control frames. So um, zero at MMC. I can always change that, right? Maybe I'll give it 10 thou. Uh, of course, when you're doing this for real, you just want to make it as loose as you can to pass as many parts as possible on parts that will still work. I'm kind of making this up as I go, so I, you know these aren't real tolerances because it's not really getting made, so I'm just trying to do what looks good here. But what we're saying here, of course, with the stack frame is these holes can land uh, anywhere within a 10 thou diameter. Oh, and I better add my diameter symbol over here, right? So we'll click there, and that adds the diameter symbol. So click here, diameter. So what we're saying is the holes can land within a 10 thou uh, diameter tolerance zone, but then the holes as a group have to be within two thou of each other uh, in their positions. I also will uh, click here and change our dimension, right? Preceding, I'm going to say 4x, and that denotes four holes. So now we know that all four of these holes have this sort of position tolerance. I also need to add an angle here, and over here, I'll say insert center, right? And so I can insert the center marks on my holes as needed. And that will come in handy because I do want to reference this vertical. And we'll say dimension from, say, here to here as an angle. I'll give that a basic of 45. So. 45 basic. Now we actually have to find the position of that notch. I almost forgot that. But let's say we want to dimension this outer surface, right? And to do that, of course, I'll add a, uh, this will come in as a radius, and I think that's fine. We'll make that basic. We'll add a feature control frame. We'll go to 94, A, B, and make sure B is at max material boundary, C. Then we'll go with profile of the surface, um, tolerance. Let's say that these, uh, this outside surface is totally non-critical, and add that. So notice we're uh, overlapping over here with this view, and I don't think I'm going to use that view at all. So I can just go to my tree here, view 3, and I, when I click on view 3, I do have the option to move it. But I think I'm just going to delete it, because it's really not needed. I can establish my dimensions without it, and move that. Next. We have a composite frame, we have this frame, but let's say that first off, right, that, that applies to this edge. And if I wanted it to go all the way around and, and include this little groove here, uh, I would come over here, show my leader, and maybe stick this, you know, somewhere. I probably don't need to stack these anymore. all around, which would be, you know, making a closed loop, or all over, which has your double circle. That's just, that's the tolerance all over. But uh, that's how you would do all around. Now, let's say I don't want to do all around. 
I want to specify a tighter tolerance for my groove. So I can do my between two points. So we'll come over here to uh, drawing management. We'll add a note. We'll make sure to show our leader. We're going to say, how about point X? And I'll make point X right on that curve. And then, of course, apply on this one. We'll make point Y and apply. I can move my leader right there. Then I can add another feature control frame. Maybe we want this to be really tight, right? Two thou profile tolerance, A, B at max material boundary, C, Actually show the leader and apply. But we have to specify that it's in between these points. So we'll come up here and we're going to say between points X and Y. So that should be, and it, I have not been getting good sleep. I have two daughters that keep me up at night, so I'm sure there, in all this there's something that I missed. Uh, but X and Y um, tells us what the tolerance is here. And then we have the other, the other tolerance over here. Uh, that's it. Yep, I think we have a fully dimensioned part with GDT. Uh, hopefully this was helpful. If it was, please subscribe. Let me know if you have any other GDT questions that I can uh, cover, and have a great one.